and a welcome to Ottawa Glendorf for tonight's matchup between the Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Kaleido Wildcats. It is the opening of the 2024 boys high school soccer season. I'm Nate Garlock, very pleased to be alongside Jerry Snodgrass. And Jerry, it's been a long summer as we have all awaited high school sports to get back underway, and it is finally here. You know, it's finally here, and you know with the more that's permitted in the summertime, you know, it, it, it's amazing. I expect a lot better play, you know, at this time of the year than we're used to seeing. There's just so much. And so for these guys, hey, summer's been over since about uh, June 15th, I think. <laughs> You know, and both of these teams have high expectations of their se of their season coming into this year. Uh, Coach Berkmeyer from Kaleida, he talks very openly about their goals are to win the district this year. They want to win the PCL as well. So they want to make sure that they get under um, off to a good start this year. We'll take a look at the starters for the Kaleida Wildcats. Number two, Jackson Schroeder. Number three, Caden Lozier. Number five, Landon Veerhoff. Number six, Grady Coleman. Number eight, Owen Grime. Number 10, Logan Kerner. Number 11, Jacob Siebenek. Number 12, Owen Siebenek. Number 14, Brady Ramp. And number 15, Grant Fortman. In the goal for the Wildcats will be the goalie, Parker Vorst. On the other side of the ball, Ottawa Glandorf. You know, Coach Metzger, he knows that he doesn't have a lot of starting experience returning to this team, but he thinks that they have the leadership to be able to step up and be able to compete in what should be, once again, an extremely difficult Western Buckeye League. You know, not only a difficult Western Buckeye League, but also a very difficult schedule. You know, they play a very challenging schedule. I think you hit it right. Not a lot of experience back, but one of the things that the returning players do have is he's, he's said he's really noticed a, an incredible desire throughout the summer to put that behind them and this is our team now that's that's going to be interesting to see take a look at the starters for the titans starting in or excuse me number three it's going to be Braden zimmerly number four ross mag he is one of the three captains for ottawa glandorf number seven wyatt croy number 10 edwin pineda Number 11, Jaden Kuhlman. He is the leading goal scorer returning for this Titans team as Ottawa Glandorf able to get that one out of trouble as Kalina looked like they were going to have a scoring opportunity there. Kuhlman also one of the captains for this team. Number 13, Gavin Mormon. He is the third and final captain for the Titans. Number 14, Larson Kreinberg. And number 15, Adam Mack. Number 21, Carter Force. Number 23, record Searfoss. And in the goal tonight for the Titans, number one, James Neese. You know, you, you mentioned, that, you know, Nate, that, you know, uh, Ottawa Glendorf graduated several of those good players from last year, but both teams really hit with the injury bug already, first game of the season. We'll talk about who they're missing in a little bit. So Ottawa Glendorf looking to get this one into the box just outside the 18. Ottawa Glandorf looking to set it up. Got it on the far side, looking for the cross into the box, and that one's going to go out. Are we going to see a corner? Yep. And they're going to say no, it's going to nope, be a goal right. kick. So I thought we might be getting our first corner kick of the game, but the official right there says it was last touch by the Titans, and Kaleida's going to get another opportunity. Kaleida finished the season last year with some really good momentum, and I know, you know, Coach Burkmeyer really talked about that being, you know, let's let's build on that momentum from a year ago. Now here comes Kaleida. They've had a couple of opportunities, but this one taken away as Kreinbrink was able to stick his foot in that one. He's working along the right side, looking to cross, able to save it before it goes out. Going to be deflected and going to be controlled by the Titans. Now here's Mormon, looking for somewhere to go. A lot of Wildcat defenders around him, but is able to get it back. Looking for a little bit of space. Moves it towards the middle of the field, but no other teammate was there as Kaleida comes up with it. But a nice slide that time for the Titans to deflect it. Kaleida, though, comes up with the rebound. You mentioned Mormon a little bit ago. He's a two-year starter returning, had five goals a year ago. And that's one strength that uh, Coach Metzger really talked about is having his midfielders, you know, and his forwards back, you know, so scoring opportunities should be a little bit better this year. We have our first whistle as this one is going to go against the Titans. I believe that they were going to get Kreinbrink that time as he had the slide tackle on Coleman. So free kick opportunity for the Wildcats. Crime break only a freshman, you know, starting in his first high school game. Ottawa Glandorf able to control the free kick, looking for a little bit of space. Gets it back, back up and across midfield. 
Actually, the header actually t sends it back towards the Titans side. We got some traffic here that Ottawa Glendorf has to fight through. More contact as this one is physical early. Right now, both teams just trying to establish themselves in the midfield. Trying to keep the ball on their side, but both defenses doing a nice job of turning them away. Everything being contested. Here's Siebenek. Siebenek works around, sends it out, sends it out wide. This one's going to get feed down to the corner. Kaleida looking to see if they can get, get the cross. This one goes into the box. As the left foot that time off of it, number three, Caden Lozier, just a little bit too strong as that one went high. Actually ended up going out of the stadium into the trees back there. You know, Nate, you mentioned, we mentioned earlier about, you know, the injury bug that's hit already early in the season. You know, it goes without saying that for Kaleida, it's going to be challenging because they're missing, you know, arguably their best player in Bubba Smith, senior forward. And they had uh, Grant Foreman, Schrader, and Kuhlman out, but they are playing tonight. So, again, I, I, I think that's one of the downsides of everything that is in the summer is, you know, they're more injury prone because they've been playing for so long. Well, that too, and I think, you know, it's a, it's a much larger, wide-ranging conversation sometimes. But, you know, soccer is um, one of those sports where a lot of these guys never stop playing. Correct. I mean, it is a year-round. They go right from fall into indoor, into their spring, and then into their summer clubs, and then right back into the fall. A lot of these guys don't get a lot of breaks. Soccer right. is what they're playing, and you know that I think can lead to that increased chance for injury. Another one that goes back into the box, and a nice job that time as James Nieces comes out, covers that one up to keep it safe. Good cross that time, but Nice comes out, makes a great stop. There's just under 34 minutes left to go here in the or in the opening half. We are tied at zero on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. You know, you're right about that. I think that's one of the things, too. And as, as physical as the game of soccer has become, you know, that is a challenge for players. And that's uh, – I could, I could talk with you for probably about three hours about that exact topic and the pros and the cons and high school – and how high school sports kind of fit into that landscape. But uh, – you know, I think people, uh, they tuned in to watch the soccer yeah. game and, and not that soapbox that I would get on. I'd get the other three hours to talk about it too, and you're right. They'd tune me out in a heartbeat. I can recall, and here I go. <laughs> but I can recall many times of just simply ha as an administrator having to say no. It's uh, it's it's an interesting dynamic that we're definitely in. As this one goes in again, and Kaleida continues to put the pressure on this Ottawa Glendorf defense that came up empty once again as this one went through untouched and up going out ends up in a goal kick. That was a great opportunity for the Wildcats. Nice lines it up, sends a kick a little bit short of midfield, controlled by the Titans. Now Ottawa Glendorf looking for a run. Works up against the left channel. Continues to feed it. Nice move against the defender, but we can continue to see, as we've called his name a couple of times, as Brady Ramp was right there on the defensive side. That one's going to go out. Throw in goes to the Wildcats. We <laughs> haven't seen Ottawa Glendorf have too many opportunities yet on the offensive side of things, but... When they've had a chance to settle at the midfield, they've done a nice job of controlling. That one's going to go out, though, and it's going to be a throw-in back to the Wildcats. That one's going to go a little bit too far and back to the Titans as the battle at the midfield continues by both teams. Talked opening about the tough schedule that the Titans have ahead of them, and that's one of the things that Coach Metzger has said is that you know, he has some players that return. I forget how many letter winners, quite a few of them actually, but they're mostly role players from a year ago and they lack a lot of that real tough game experience. So, you know, that's something as a coach you just have to realize and be patient as you build throughout the year. So we're going to have our first corner kick of the game as that one went out on the Titans. I'm having a hard time seeing of who is down there setting the corner. Going to send this one into the box, off the head. Uh, it looks like that was number 11, Jacob Siebenek, that got up to get a piece of that one, but it goes out, and it'll be another goal kick for the Titans. It's a great corner kick. 
Yeah, they had an opportunity. A couple of white jerseys were there, but off the top of the head of Siebenek, and the Titans avoid uh, the danger. Once again, right around midfield. Is Titans right now finding themselves playing a whole lot of defense here in the early going of the first half. Kaleida was comes into this, you know, eight, seven, and four last season. Really, they also have that desire to get back to the regionals. Opportunity here for the Titans, looking for the run. Get into the box, and there's going to be a fight. This one's going to get put out, and it, we're going to have a corner now. This time it's going to be for the Titans. A great run that time by Jaden Coleman. As we mentioned, the senior is the leading score, uh, goal scorer coming back for this Titan team. And it is going to be number 13, Gavin Mormon's going to line up that corner. So Mormon will send that one in, a short kick that time. It's going to go back out, and we're going to – and no, they're going to say that was actually off of Ottawa Glandorf. So comes Ottawa Glandorf comes up empty on the corner kick opportunity. It's going to be a goal kick for the Wildcats. You know, it's early – you know, I talk about getting back to the regionals, and it's kind of a toss-up right now because I know that's a long way away, but going to five divisions now in boys' soccer from three. Yeah, that's a, that's a big change for I sure. have not really seen who is in what division. And uh, having some experience on knowing how regionals and districts and sectionals are drawn, that's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, I think that – I think – I mean, obviously, it's a big change for all the sports that will be affected. But coming out of it, I, I felt like soccer and, and maybe baseball were the two that were going to see the largest impact as far as some of these teams that, that may get a little relief from some of the uh, the bigger schools that have had to play and they maybe get that another uh, additional opportunities that they wouldn't have gotten had things stayed the same. And I think baseball, you can throw softball in there too that will go from four divisions to seven. Yeah. So, you know, you're right. I think the impact on that is going to be great. This one's going to be off the right foot, and that goes out just inside the flag. So another corner kick coming for the Titans. It was an interesting strategy the last time as they left that one short. See if that's what the, uh, the game plan is going to continue to be. And, nope, this one's going to go wide, and it goes trying to get to the back post, but a little bit too much on that one as it curls out and result in a goal kick for Kaleida. Two good opportunities for Ottawa Glandorf. Titans have had two corner kicks. So Parker Vorse has seen a lot of traffic back there, but he hasn't really had to do no. a whole lot. Vorse waiting for his offense to get set. Sends this one away. Gets right about to midfield. Gets sent back by the Titans. So the Titans are... Going to work to try to keep this on their side of the field. See if they can't challenge for another score opportunity. Some deflections that time and good effort. As you see Mormon hit the ground, keep this one alive. Going to work it up, looking for the cross. That one's going to get rejected, going to go out. And we'll have another corner kick opportunity for Mormon. Mormon sends this one, and it is way, way off tar target. You know, here we are on a Friday night. It's interesting because I, I go back to, you know, how this all developed. It's Friday night football. Yeah. And it's one of the – I remember when it was cre we created it. I'm very proud of the staff that created that. And we kind of look back from how the – everything on the scheduling works from the state tournament back, and we realized we had a – possibility of moving the start of the soccer season to the Friday of the week before so there's no football. Why not publicize it? And you can tell by the crowd here tonight, you know, it's been a good thing. Friday night football. Yeah, and I think it, you know, I think it took a little bit for some teams to pick up on it and kind of get comfortable with, with, with that. But every year it seems like more and more teams are taking advantage of that early start and, and you know, trying to get that extra exposure from the right. Friday night football opportunity. And, you know, with not fighting on a Friday night against a football crowd or anything. Plus, it's build your own burger night here at, at <laughs> Titan Soccer Stadium. Can't beat that. 
Kaleida with an opportunity here. Defense able to recover quickly and get this one out of trouble. Long kick on the ground, one on one. Great job with the challenge, two saves. saves. James Neves came, came up big that time as he came out to challenge the first one, got the save. The rebound though got away from him and looked like it might have been a, a great opportunity for Kaleida, but Neves stands tall, tall and gets the two saves. That has to be a huge boost for the Titans. Now here comes Ottawa Glandorf and lose this one. Jackson Schroeder on the other side, fighting tough. That one goes out of bounds. And we're going to have some substitutions here. We'll see if we can't get these numbers for you as they come in. There's three subs coming in for the Titans. Looks like number two, Justin Kale, is coming in. Number 16, Zach Rue. And number 10, Edwin Pineda coming back in. I think bench players are going to play a huge role in this game. I mean, the humidity is very much picked up. The sun is out, you know, rained earlier. But uh, it's very humid, and I think it takes its toll on players. Oh, for sure. And Pineda actually originally was a part of the starting lineup. I think we even announced him as a starter. We did. Missed that uh, they had a – Ottawa Glendorf had a last-second change, but he's now into the game. Coleman trying to direct traffic, trying to get everybody in position. Not a great pass that time, taken away by Kaleida. Mormon trying to seal, can create some space. And here comes Pineda. So right now, the Titans are having to play in a very tight space. That one's going to go out. The throw one's going to come in for the Titans, but another substitute coming in for Ottawa Glendorf. Long throw in gets taken away by Kaleida. Mormon reaches right in, pokes that one right away. Going to give the Titans an opportunity here as they're going to try to split the defense. Does a nice job of controlling it at his feet. That was Ross Mag. That one's going to go through and an easy save by Parker Vorst. Talked about the tough schedule the Titans face. Kaleida has a tough schedule ahead of them, too. They've got Ottaville, of course, in the PCL. And OG plays uh, Ottaville, I believe, in two games down the road. So, you know, tough schedules by both teams. And that's, again, why playing bench players this early is key. Another opportunity for Kaleida. This one's going to end up right in, the, right into the hands and chest of Nice. And I think he was caught a little off guard by that one as it kind of glanced off his left side. But quick recovery as he gets that one back. As James Nice has seen a lot of shots here in this first half. You know, nice is only a sophomore. Really showing some good strength there in the goal. Talked about, uh, we've talked about the schedule a few times. As Ottawa Glendorf plays in the Western Buckeye League, which over the last seven to ten years has been just an absolutely dominant conference. Yes. You had Shawnee go through their run. They look like they're built to have another strong year this year. St. Mary's, um, Kenton. Yes, I, yeah, I that, you know, I mean, Kenton's, you know, has improved so much in the last several years. Yeah, that Western Buckeye League is is a juggernaut. And if you're Ottawa Glendorf and you, you know, everybody knows what you're facing in conference. You have to beef up that non-conference schedule because if you don't, you're not going to be ready to play. You know, that's something that, you know, from the days of administrating soccer and really kind of following it statewide, that's one of the things I've always had the greatest respect for soccer coaches. They will play. They want to play the best competition. Yes. And, you know, don't shy away from it. And uh, I give a lot of respect for that. So as you saw the last shot, there was a header that went over the goal and went out once again. So Kaleida continuing to put the pressure on Ottawa Glandorf, but so far they've come up empty, and we are still tied at 0-0 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. This one's going to go out of bounds, throw in coming for the Wildcats. Yeah, too, go back to that schedule thing for a minute. You know, there's a lot of conferences around the state that when it comes into sectional district play, they're spread out, so they don't play each other right away. Around here, because of the predominance of the size of schools in their in their division, they're, they're meeting those same tough schools in the early rounds, and it's just so hard to get through it. 
Well, and you talk about, you know, we talked about the Western Buckeye League, but the PCL has been incredibly difficult. Correct. The, the Kaleida Autoville rivalry over yes. the last couple of years with the clubs that they have had has been fantastic to watch. I can remember a few years ago, you and I had the opportunity we did. to call it one of those tournament games. And, yeah, I mean, you see each other during the regular season, then you have to, you know, see each other again in the postseason. It's almost a shame that some of these really talented teams, they end up just kind of getting rid of each other. But that also might be one of those things with this new expanded division you don't see as much of anymore. Well, you know, you talked about you know seeing them during the regular season, seeing them at tournament. You see them at church on Sunday. You see them, <laughs> exactly. see them at the store all, exactly. all week long. And, you know, you see them at uh, relatives' parties because, you know, <laughs> they're all related. Gavin Mormon's going to take cool. a seat as record Sear Falls comes back into the game for the Titans. As I think you're right. I think you're seeing on these teams, and even though that we know that they've been working hard, you know, probably all year, definitely into the summer, you, know, you can see a little bit of that exhaustion when you, can. it, it, you can't replicate this in practice. No matter how hard you try, every coach will tell you that. And then, just to make it worse, we decide to have a day full of, of rain and, you know, some thunderstorms here and there, and then the sun comes out, everything yeah. heats up, the humidity goes to 100, <laughs> and these kids are out here trying to, to keep going. And, I think you're seeing that. And that's why Ottawa Glendorf, you see a lot of rotating players come in. It's nice to have that kind of depth. Not as many substitute opportunities on the other side. And you wonder if that will come into play as this game continues to move forward where maybe you'll see Ottawa Glendorf with the fresher legs, not Kaleida. Yeah, it would be very interesting to see. And that's why, again, that injury bug, the number of players you know, coming off the bench, all big keys. A soccer ball that's high and into the – into the trees behind the goal once again. James Neese lines up his goal kick. Yeah, give everybody a little extra time here as we had another substitution come in. And they're taking it. <laughs> yes, they are. Here's Carter Vorst. Moves it up ahead. Croy looks to get Pineda on a run. Pineda looking for a little bit of space. Gets it across midfield. Nice cross into the middle. Got in a little bit of trouble there. So had to drop it off back to his safety as Ottawa Glandorf now flips the field. Searfoss looking for some space. He's having to fight two or three defenders. This one, uh, nice deflection that went into the Titans' favor but ended up kind of in no man's land and a shot that comes out wide and a nice save that time by Parker Vorst. Great offensive flurry there by the Titans. Yeah, a couple of fortunate deflections that look like it might really benefit the Titans, but not able to cash in. Kaleida now looking to send it the other way. Long punt coming by, by Vorst. And it's going to be controlled by the Wildcats. Stefan sends this one up ahead. Not much of a challenge on that side for the Titans at that time as Kaleida just kind of had an opportunity to dictate what they wanted to do. But we got a whistle. This one's going to go against the Wildcats. So a foul on Kaleida. As OG, I think, probably got a little fortunate there as they looked like they yeah, did. just kind of a little stagnant there for a minute as Kaleida was just kind of being able to dictate what they wanted to do. Long kick. This one's going to get sent immediately back by the Wildcats. OG trying to create a little bit of space here, see if they can't get that defense spread out, looking for a run. This one gets sent up on the left channel, and it's going to get sent. It looked like that was going to get sent right back sure up. Did. Nice job, though, by OG to have a, a guy in the right place at the right time, but ultimately it doesn't matter as Kaleida now has the opportunity. Ada sends this one back up to the midfield. As right now, Ottawa Glendorf and Kaleida just kind of exchanging kicks right around that midfield. Here comes Kalina looking for another score opportunity at the 16-minute mark here in the first half. This one's going to get sent out, and it is going to be a goal kick. Or no, excuse me, it looks like it was going to be a foul. So it looks like we're going to have a uh, 
Free kick opportunity for the Titans over there. A little bit too much contact, as you could tell. Ottawa yeah. Landorf did not want to give up an inch. Uh, didn't want to have to risk an entry pass. Here comes Kalida one more time, trying to fit it through a tight window. Ottawa Landorf sends this one right back. See Kale trying to chase this one down. He can't get to it. As Sibanek wins that battle, Sibanek still with it. Working against two Titans. He ends up on the ground. Otto Landorf takes it away. Moving it back up to the midfield. Beerhoff looking for a little bit of space. He gets that one knocked away. Kalina maintains possession. See the Wildcats looking to slow things down just a little bit. Nice feed. Going to send it out wide. Record sends it back into the middle. This one gets headed away. Pineda sends it back up towards the midfield. Contact that time is. You can tell that uh, Kreinbrink, and I believe he was battling with Schroeder. Another one that goes into the middle. Boy, through this first 25 minutes, you, you have to give the Titan defense a lot of credit. They are seeing a lot of pressure, that is for sure. Another one that's going to get sent into the middle, gets sent away. As Ross Mag kicks this one out just to get it out of trouble, but it's going to result in a corner kick for the Wildcats. As we have multiple substitutions coming in for both teams. And in Beerhoff down to. Send this corner kick in. Going to look for a little bit of traffic. Goes to the front post that time, and then immediately gets sent back out. It's going to roll out for a throw in for Kaleida. Deerhoff gets this one in. Ends up at the feet of Fortman. Fortman sends it up front. Kaleida, another opportunity. Found a gap there and got it through. Yeah, he did. And it just seems like right now, Ottawa Glendorf is playing with fire. It yes, seems they are. almost inevitable that Kaleida is going to find a lane here before too long if Ottawa Glendorf doesn't get this one on the other side of the field quickly. You look at those three shots that uh, Nice stopped. Beerhoff sends this one in near post yet again. It's going to get taken away. Ottawa Glendorf is going to look to send this one upfield, but not a lot of space. Kaleida does a nice job of cutting it off. And a great job of clearing that by Ottawa Glandorf. And now it's a foot race. Coming off the far side. Some contact that time as Jaden Coleman couldn't control it. Ottawa Glandorf keeps possession. Boy, did Grady Coleman show his speed on that getting down. Here's Mormon. Mormon sends it. And that one just deflected off of Parker Voice's hands. He sends it off the top of the crossbar and he gathers it in. A great opportunity for the Titans, but Parker Vore stands tall. They're not going to get a lot of opportunities, so that was the best one they've had so far. Great job by Parker Vorst. And even though that was a great opportunity and it was great execution by the Titans, how quickly do they now have to get back on defense? After yeah. all that time defending, they did that on a quick, fast break, and now Kaleida right back in control. Here's Vierhoff. Vierhoff wins his one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to send it towards Nice. Nice gathers that one in. As right now, fortunately for Nice, a lot of these shots coming from Kaleida have been right at his chest. Yeah, the Wildcats are almost relentless on the offensive end. Ottawa Glendorf looking for another scoring opportunity now. See a little bit of physicality continuing here between both teams. Nothing dirty, nothing that anybody should be upset about, but definitely playing hard soccer right now. And that's impressive for a rivalry like this. You know, you don't, you're right, nothing dirty, nothing unsportsmanlike, just good, hard, aggressive soccer. Record just able to track that one down before it goes out as Kaleida looked like they were going to have a good opportunity. Record can't get to that one, though, and that's going to result in a goal kick for the Titans. 
More substitutions coming in for Ottawa Glandorf as they are continuing to try to keep fresh legs on the pitch tonight. I, you know, the coaches saw it too, but in that little floor, I could just see some heads hanging. I could see some, you know, some really sweaty players. So now here's Nice. Gonna line this one up. Sends this one up toward mid, towards midfield. Kaleido wins it again again. Deerhoff looking for Wrecker once again. Wrecker to left foot, sends it to the middle. This one's going to get deflected and sent back away. Now the Titans looking for some space. That one got a little bit too far away from Kreinbrink. Wrecker fighting with Pineda. Pineda able to take it away. Pineda moves back towards the middle. A little bit of an errant pass that time is... The space is not a whole lot on this side of the field for the Titans. And it seems like everywhere they want to go with the pass, there's a Wildcat right there. Fortunate to get this throw in. A great throw in that time. As that one comes by Mag. Mag going to set him up. Here comes the kick. And Jaden Coleman not able to find a corner on that one as Parker Vorse falls down on that shot. I'm looking at Larson Kreinberg. I think he's trying to get a sub in for him. He, he is exhausted. Here's Wrecker, plays it at his feet, drops it off to Beerhall. This one's gonna get sent up by Siebenek. Siebenek works through, drops it up, and Ottawa Glendorf takes it away. Didn't even have a fight on that far side. That one's gonna get sent out. They're gonna say throw in. It's gonna stay with the Titans. And you were exactly right, Jerry, as Crimebrick got a substitute that time as he steps off and he looks absolutely exhausted over <laughs> there on the sideline. OG wins the header, but Kaleida, they get the ball. As the midfield battle continues between these two teams here late in the first half, 8.35 left to go, still tight at zero. This one's going to get sent out and throw one coming for the Titans. Kick down the uh, first baseline next door for the OG baseball team at 824. Throw in for OG. Kale tried to save that one from going back out of bounds, but not quite in time, so throw one's going to go back to the Wildcats. Missing in OG's normal lineup. He's going to get sent into Fortman. Fortman moves it up to the midfield. Ottawa Glandorf looking for another opportunity here. Searfoss sends this one on a slide tackle out. A throw in will go towards to, uh, go for Clyde, excuse me. This one's going to go up and out. It'll be last touched by Kalaitis. So a throw in now for the Titans. Mag. He has had great throw-ins tonight. Going to look for another one here. See how deep he can get it. Nice spin on that yes, one. Send it, it back to the middle of the field. Ottawa Glandorf looking for the shot. And just under Vorce, as it looked like Vorce maybe was a little bit covered and couldn't quite see it. Got a late break, started to lose his footing. And as he tried to dive for it, it goes underneath him. But fortunately for the Wildcats, it rolls out and will result in a goal kick. And he's thanking everybody that that was just about a foot wide of the goal. You're right. I don't think he could see it. You know, yeah, he must have gotten blocked. And he dove for that about half second late. And actually, you know, it's probably a good thing he didn't touch it because if he'd have gotten yeah. a bit of it and it goes out, you know, Ottawa Glendorf gets a corner kick there. So everything kind of went Kaleida's way that time. And now they're going to try to move it up. Nice deflection for the Wildcats. Going to be a foot race. Lozier trying to win it, sends it back over. Deflection goes out, and it's going to result in a corner kick for the Titans. You know, they have not scored yet, but I am very impressed with their offensive attack. So a lot of pressure on both sides here late in this half, as both teams would love to be able to get on the scoreboard. Put a little bit of pressure on the other team. James Neese sends this one away. Neese is getting a little bit of a break after a while there. He just seemed like about every other minute he had two or three shots coming his way. I'm sure he appreciates a breather. 
Here's Wrecker. Wrecker, nice drop up top. Here's Grime, and Grime can't get much on that one as it's rolled right into the arms of awaiting James Neese. Neese throws this one out to Zimmerly. Zimmerly has to get rid of it, and a not a good touch by Pineda. As that one's going to go out, knocked out once again, and it's going to be another goal kick for the Titans. Going to have a couple of substitutions. Why they do that, we'll step aside. You're watching Boys High School Soccer, WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. Five minutes left to go in this one. Excuse me, in the first half at least. Still tied at zero. Schrader looking for some space, and it looked like he had an yeah. avenue there. Kind of surprised he decided to pull that one back out. As this one's going to get sent, and Nice. Sometimes those are the hardest yeah, ones to control. Exactly. You know, he saw it coming the whole way. Not much put on that one. And, you know, you can kind of let your guard down at times. Yep. And, you know, we've seen those go in, but Nice does a nice job of gathering that one. Especially if there's a Clyde player nearby. You know, that rebound off of him can easily be a score. Star trying to get everybody to see it. Here's Wrecker fighting for the loose ball. He's working against Adam Mag. Is, you know, Jerry, you gotta you gotta love the press box. You know, we're we're all in here nice and tight. We're yes, all a, we are. We're all we're all a, <laughs> a family up here. Hey, you know, you, you, you I, catch some strays every we, now and we then. Sure did. <laughs> the, the, the way I like it though is, you know, what what great coverage for high school soccer. Oh, absolutely. Especially in this area. Um, you know, it, it's untouched compared to the other places. I always used to laugh running tournament games at Finley when I was the athletic director and uh, tournament managers there. You know, the smaller schools, the local schools, they were the hardest to control because there were so many media covering them. You know, you get some of the bigger schools, and they might have one station. This one's going to go out, last touched by Kaleidos. Ottawa Glandorf's going to get a throw in here by Mag. Mag's got the big arm. He's going to drop this one off short, though. As Ottawa Glandorf trying to go quickly here, looking for an opportunity. And Mag, a little bit of a miss kick as this one's going to go wide. So Zimmerly looking for somewhere to go. Here's Mormon. Mormon looking to beat his man. Gets to the middle. Trying to chip it up that time to Coleman, but just a little bit too much on that one. And Parker Borsch goes out and collects it. Now 240. 2.40 left to go here in the opening half. Yeah, I talked about, you know, James Neese in goal for the Titans, but uh, boy, Parker Forst has done a good job too. Very good job. Comes Kaleida, looking through. Wrecker, looks to be this guy, gets it, has a step. Going to try to cross. Nice job recovering that time by Zimmerly. Wrecker, nice job. Use it with the left foot. Right to the middle. Right in front of the goal. Wow. What a save wow. by James Neese. Kaleida with another opportunity, and they're going to send this one just wide of the goal. What a great opportunity for the Wildcats, but an even better save by James Neese. Yeah, that's a highlight reel. That's a highlight The sophomore is absolutely incredible back there. 48 to go, and each guy has made, in between the pipes, a terrific save. Because at 12.36, it was the other well, You can always, any sport, you can win with defense. He's going to try to send this one away, see if he can't give his team an opportunity here late after coming up with the big save. Ottawa Glendorf watches this one go back across midfield and out. They'll have the throw in. And no, they're going to actually say that it was deflected off a shoulder, so it's going to go back to Kaleida as the Ottawa faithful not happy with that one. Ottawa Glendorf looking to... Go back, collect this one, sends it back up to the midfield. 
Nice job winning that one by Mormon. One minute remaining here in the first half. Ottawa Glandorf on the attack, trying to make something happen late. This one's going to get sent out, throw into the Wildcats. Kaleida looking to move quickly. Logan Kerner with the ball. Going to send this one out wide. And Way too wide. much on that one. 37 seconds left to go. The Titans are going to have to move quick if they're going to look for another opportunity. Not a great touch. That one's going to go out. And actually going to say last touch by Kaleida. Here's Mag. Long throw into the box. Trying to see if they can't get a deflection, make something happen. This one's going to get sent back up and sent out. There's going to be a corner kick by the Titans, but I don't have to know hustle. if there's enough time. They're trying to go quick. Ten seconds left to go. Here's the corner. It gets sent in, and that one was just off the target as Boris, just to be sure, reached over, poked that one out, and that is going to bring the first half to a close. A fast-paced, very defensive heavy, but the goalie's coming up big here in the first half for both teams. We're tied 0-0. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Back to Ottawa Glendorf High School. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Nick Garlock alongside Jerry Snodgrass. And Jerry, it was a very fun first half. And we have a 0 0 tie here, but it wasn't for a lack of opportunities. The two young goalies just came up huge for their teams to keep everybody out of the net. And when you brought to brought to the attention of our scoreboard sponsor, those double zeros are up there because of some great, great soccer play in the first half. As the Titans quickly tried to get it across back into the box, not able to make that one happen either. But I mean, I we may, it's, it is night one, game one of this season, and there's a good chance that we already saw the save of the year yep. by James Neese. You know, the, that save that he had down there when, I mean, <laughs> he had the Kaleida player within two yards of him. There was no reason he should have been able to save that one and somehow right. was able to get to it. As Kaleida now trying to get the run, coming down here on the right side, looking for the cross, going to get poked away, throw in, will stay with the Wildcats. Kaleida goes quick, gets this one into the box. She holding dry. Oh, wow. Another good opportunity, and they just missed that one as well. What great ball play, though, uh, you know, by, by Kaleida. Great cross right there, setting him up, and just went over the goal. And, I mean, it has seemed like it all night that Kaleida has been around that goal. It, it almost feels inevitable for him, but somehow Otto Glendorf continues to turn away and keep this one at zero. They got to find a way to pull this momentum back to their side, though. Titans move this one. They come up the left side. That one's going to go out, throw in for the Titans. We mentioned this earlier. I, I, I really believe the conditioning of players and really going to play a role here late you know, in the second half. Long cross that time goes just out of reach for the Titans player, going to result in a goal kick. Though it doesn't look like either team is, you know, out of shape in the least bit. I mean, it's just no, that. But we did see a whole lot of substitutions. <laughs> we sure in did, first half. which is smart on the coach's part. Especially by the Titans. I mean, every time it seemed like the Titans were substituting, they were going three at a time, trying to keep those legs fresh. And, you know, we mentioned it, and I, 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 mean, I still believe it. I think that that may be, especially as this, this one stays tied at zero. If Ottawa Glendorf is able to have the fresher legs late in this one, yep. and, you know, kind of get a little bit, everything's a little bit more tougher, you get a little bit more pressure, I, I think that those substitutions early in this one could play out big for the Titans. And, you know, I think that's a valuable thing, too, for Coach Metzger because he's talked about getting game experience for a lot of these players that, you know, some lettered, many letter winners, but really didn't have a lot of real game experience. So I think that's going to pay dividends, you know, not just late in this game, but you know, down the road as well. I'm trying to stay with that one, but not able to gather that one in. There's OG. Going to move this one up ahead. Croy. To gather this one up, almost gets it out, able to save it. 
Sends it back into the middle. Here's Mormon. Mormon fighting through two defenders. Just keeping this one alive. Has a little bit of space. One more space. Nice slide kick as an easy one for Vorses. And actually, Gavin Mormon did a nice job of moving through traffic and trying to create a little bit of space at that time, but couldn't get much on that shot as Parker Vorse was easily able to gather that one up. Mormon, the senior midfielder, did a great job of you know, controlling the ball, getting through, getting it into space, and just didn't have enough on it to take a clear, good, hard shot. OG continuing to be on the offensive here, trying to put pressure. Sierra Falls down on that far side is that sun is setting, and it's kind of right in our eyes here in the press box. A little bit difficult to see what's going on down there. It's, it's going to be a uh, throw in by the Titans at the feet of Sear Falls. He's going to send it to the other side of the field. and Had way too much on that one. That's going to be a throw in for the Wildcats. There's a couple areas on the field right now, too, that make it very difficult, you know, for uh, OG looking into that sun. Well, and if you look down, and I don't know if we'll see it um, with our camera shot, our cameraman Jacob doing a great job as always, but you can see down on the other side right now, James Neese having a hard time yeah. with that sun. His arms up, trying to shield. It is, it is not easy seeing it come from that side. It's even going to be more important for Ottawa Glandor to try to keep things down on this side of the field. Looking for a breakaway. Croy trying to win the one-on-one -on -one against Schrader. Uses the right foot back towards the middle, and Siebenek takes that one away. Ball kind of sat there for a little bit. You know, nobody nobody got on it. Now here comes Kaleida. This one's going to get taken away. Adam Mag does a nice job. As here's Matt Ross Mag now. Looks like maybe a possible handball that time, but the deflection ends up down on the ground. Kaleida looking for a little bit of space. They're in a tight window over there. They got to get things spread out. Long kick by the Titans. Trying to get this one down to Coleman. He's going to be out of his reach. And Schrader now is going to gather it in for Kaleida. Schrader working against Croy. Grim, he gets taken down on the slide tackle. Ball is going to stay with Kalinda, though. Nice run opportunity for the Wildcats. This one's going to go into the middle. Nice job knocking that one down, sending it away by the Titans. Another opportunity here, though, for Lozier. Lozier splits the defense. A great move as he tries to center it. And that one's going to get sent back away and out. Kalida looking for the throw in, trying to find some space. Grimm does a nice job of getting that one down at his feet. Nice spin as Nice comes out in a great yeah. challenge by James Nice as he just took it right off the foot from uh, from Owen Grimm. Yep. Did the right thing of coming out after it. Broke up a great another great opportunity for the Wildcats. Nice opportunity. Here's Mag on the breakaway as he sends this one. And what a great job by Parker Vorst. Done a nice job of reaching that one, and he didn't waste any time on that rebound as he was able to jump up and cover it up to protect it as Ross Mag was coming in quickly to try to clean it up. You know, that was great all the way around. Ross Mag did a nice job, good pass to him. I forget who, who sent it to him, but, you know, and then a great job by uh, Vorce coming out and getting it. Now here comes Kaleida back the other way. As Logan Kerner had a little bit of an avenue there, but ends up hasn't it taken away. Ottawa Glandorf sends it back to the other side of the field, but Sibanek able to gather that one in. You know, speed plays such a factor in soccer, and I kind of was interested going into this, you know, who had the greater speed. It looks like it looks like pretty 50-50, doesn't it? It does, and I, and I think that even more goes into what we were kind of talking about with the substitutions is 
when they're when they're both equal, I, I don't really know that anybody quite has the edge in speed. Agree. Yeah. But as this one goes in, as we have 31 minutes left to go here in the game, legs are going to start getting tired. Ottawa Glandorf seems to have the depth option right now that Kaleida doesn't. Um, and we'll see, you know, what kind of factor that plays in. Right. We have a corner opportunity here for the Wildcats. And then you start looking at the great job that Nice has done in goal. And yeah, Nice has really come up big for the Titans. And he has been the main reason why this one is still tied at zero. See, even there on that other side, you don't see either player a speed dominance by either one. Another sub opportunity coming in for the Titans. We'll step aside and be back. WONSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Landorf coming off the substitutions, trying to get things going on the offensive end. Have this taken away. A great opportunity here by the Wildcats as they play it up. Owen Siebenet gathers this one in, sends it to the middle. None of his teammates were there to help him clean it up, though. This one's going to get sent out. And Kaleida actually able to gather that one in. A miscue that time by the Titans as they're able to recover, though. As it looked like for a minute there, Owen Siebenet was going to have a clear... Uh, through ball to play. Kaleida not with the opportunity as this time it was Jacob Siebenek as he just tried to take the shot from distance. James Neese, probably one of the easier saves he's had tonight. It is, but boy, he put some, he put some effort into the kick, didn't he, into the shot? The thing was flying. Finish Croy knocks this one down. Mag gets it up right around midfield. A little bit of, little bit of contact that time, so Otto Glendorf drops this one back into safety. You know, it's amazing how clean the game has been. Yeah, de definitely. Especially, you know, we've seen contact, but they've done a nice job of being physical without drawing those whistles. A little bit of a bad touch that time, maybe a mistake, as Coleman's fighting for it. And he doesn't have... The uh, possession, just as we were talking about the lack of whistles, Coleman able to draw one that time. So a free kick coming for the Titans, and Ross Mag will take it. Mag's going to send this one deep into the box, looking for a header. It's Vorce out of the net. Wow. And Kaleida that time dodges a bullet as Vorce was found out of the net as he got tied up trying to poke that one away. Here comes another long shot. Vorce going to let this one go out, and it will be a goal kick for Kaleida. Yeah, they did dodge a bullet on that. He's out. He was out of goal and got tied up trying to get back in. Kaleida has some substitutions this time as they're trying to get some fresh legs out on the pitch. Morse lining things up, going to send this one deep. You know, early in that first half, it really looked like Kaleida was dominating. We've seen them really control the midfield, get things going on their side. They couldn't get one in the net. Here in the second to start, though, it's been more Ottawa Glendorf as they have seen more in control, more of possession, but a miss hit that time may lead to an opportunity for Kaleida Another run along that right side and a little bit too much on that one as James Neese goes out and collects that up. Dodged a bullet a little bit there, too. It was just a miss hit, miss kick. Here comes the Titan. They're going to try to speed things up. Owen Siebenek drops this one off. This one to Lozier. Lozier gets it back to Siebenek. And this one... Croy had to do, a, do his best make, Matrix impersonation that time to get out of the way of that one. <laughs> Couple substitutions coming in. Nada coming back in as Jacob Siebenek is going to, as we have some time stop here for a minute. So I saw Pineda come back in. Didn't catch the number of the other substitute for Ottawa. No, I didn't either. But they've been subbing so, uh, in so much here, it's kind of hard to keep track of who's coming in and who's going out. A couple of subs coming in as well for Kaleida. 
timing. Back in play. 27 minutes left to go in this one. We are tied at zero. Owen Siebenek looking for a little bit of space. Drops this one off. Carter Vorse has to get through some traffic. See Mag come in, give him a little bit of help. Nice job by the Titans to create space. This one's going to get played down to Mag. Mag just tries to poke it up. Kaleida does a nice job of getting that one and sending it the other direction. There's been a lot more ball control this, this half with the Titans. It has. They definitely seem like they were playing a lot more on their heels there in that first half, but here they, they seem more comfortable now. But here comes an opportunity for the Wildcats. They're going to set it up, and that one's in. As soon as I great say that. Great job by Landon Beerhoff to come and clean up that cross as that is just out of the outstretched reach of James Neese. And the Kalina Wildcats get on the scoreboard first. They are on top of one to nothing. What a great cross that was. What a, what a, what a great cross, great shot. Kalina on top, one nothing. Ottawa Glendorf going to try to go really quick here with the restart as actually they're going to stop things here. Does it look like, oh, because we're going to have a substitute. 26-13 for the clock as getting things cleaned up a little bit there with the timing. Yeah, we were just talking about how Alu Glendorf had looked really well. They, they didn't really seem like they, had, they were on their heels very much. We thought things were going well for them, but a little bit of miscommunication on the side there. And, Verhoff did a nice job being where he needed to be. Landon put that one in the back of the net and finally get the scoring underway here. 26-13 for the main clock here as the officials are trying to get things set aside. So as they get work on the clock, we'll step aside as well. We'll be back on WOSA. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. 26-14 left to go in this one. The Wildcats finally on the scoreboard. They're on top of one to nothing. As now there's a little bit more pressure here on the Titans. As they have had a couple of opportunities. They haven't been able to... Um, be able to cash in on their opportunities. And we'll see now if they can make something happen here late in this half. Foul on Kaleida on that. Control stays here with Ottawa Glandorf. Ottawa Glandorf not going to have opportunity here for the free kick. We'll see if they can make anything happen here. We've seen, be, we've seen Parker Vorce be a little bit more aggressive here in yeah. this second half. And, you know, the client has been fortunate that it hasn't led to a goal. And once again, ball gets played into the box. It stays in the box, but the Titans not able to come away with a clean look at the net. That was a great, great effort by Wyatt Croy over there. Trying and eventually keeping con or keeping control of the ball. So Kaleida looking to play it along that left side yet again. OG going to get the throw in. Siebenek gets tied up that time. Excuse me, with Hunter Rose. That one's going to go out. Stays with the Titans. Another throw in. Off the head or wow. line drive throw in. And he stood tall to take I don't think he really had anywhere to go, so he just right. decided to take it off of his head. And Titans had possession there for a minute, but the throw in's going to go back to colliding. Frankly, it kind of seems like that's only fair after the header yeah. that the Wildcat player just took. So here, you take it. It's yours. Nate Garlock along with Jerry Snodgrass here at Ottawa Glendorf High School. We are here for the opening night of the 2024 boys high school soccer season.
Friday night football, a tradition that, Jerry, as you mentioned, you were a part of getting started here in the state of Ohio as it soccer continues to grow throughout the entire state, and this has become a, a great tradition to kick off the start of the season. Yeah, you know, I was fortunate enough to administrate the sport for 10 years statewide basis and, you know, really developed a great appreciation for soccer coaches, uh, what they do, the and the players themselves. I mean, that's what it's all about. And the Friday night football was a concept that, you know, hey, why not? you got a Friday night under the lights. You know, you're not battling a crowd with football home or away. And, you know, and, and for that matter, volleyball or anything else, which normally during the season you are, let's make it Friday night football. We're going to have a handball whistle that time. Is, I was going to go on Grant Fortman. You know, and I'm digressing here a little bit, but I saw one the other night uh, down in Central Ohio, Newark High School, had uh, the volleyball. Did you see the volleyball uh, showdown at sundown? I believe it was yeah, called. Yeah, it was. It was. I, you wait, you'll see that develop that with all the other great, schools. I, you know, I'll tell you what, I get to give Newark a lot. I of do credit. too. People obviously around here may not be the most familiar with Newark. I am through lacrosse. Um, Newark started their program at the same time that Lima Senior started theirs, and I've been involved with Lima Senior lacrosse from the beginning. So I've, I've got a very close relationship with their lacrosse coach and over the last two or three four years they have really tried to be at the forefront of creating right. new things the lacrosse program has started their own seven seven v seven tournament in november to try to get teams ready to go you see the volleyball down on the field they are really trying to create something down there um, for people to you know just enjoy that's right. different and that vol it was a great idea. Yeah. It really was. It showed the crowd. It was, it was yeah. really neat, you know. And people were how they, and, and for our listeners and, and those people watching, um, you know, it was on a football field, um, used a uh, sport court probably, I think, uh, what they used on the field. And uh, fans were around the court and everything. It was really cool. Uh, we have an injury on the field, it looks like. Maybe just cramping, hopefully. But as they work on him, we'll step aside and we'll be back on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring the resort style living in your backyard every day with luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Wyatt Croy able to walk off the field under his own power, even though Ginger Lee is. He's having some cramping issues here on this humid night, and that cannot feel good as Croy continues to try to work on that on the sidelines. He's been a big part of the OG defense tonight. They're going to want to get him back on the field if they can as quick as possible. This one, it, throw in though, not going to be able to be controlled by the Titans. Ends up going back out, and now here comes Kaleida. Looking for the run, tries to split the defense. As the Titans able to chase this one down. And look like they're going to, yeah, they're going to give that one to the Titans down there. Long throw in. Titans working along the edge, trying to get something going towards the middle. But nobody trailing that time, and that one's going to get sent back out. And before we went to break, you know, Jerry, we were talking about that, that the volleyball uh, scrimmage that they had down there in Newark. And, you know, I, I, I don't know how they did it either. I'm not sure yeah. what, what they put on that field. Um, but if you haven't seen it, go go find the social media. Go seek it out. It's really cool. It's really unique. Reminds me a lot of what um, – I believe it was Nebraska, maybe, yeah, what right. they had did. And, you know, it's starting to become more of it. Let's make events out yeah, of this correct. stuff. And, correct. you know, I love that for sports. You know, it gives these kids a different way of showcasing what they can do. And it just, it's its a memory creator. Correct. Right? And I think the more games you're permitted, which the number of games permitted by high school teams has increased almost in every sport over the last several years, you kind of have those extra events to kind of work with. Right. You know, and I love the ingenious thinking of, of you know, granted, you know, Nebraska's the one that did it and started it, but nonetheless, for somebody to make that happen in high school is really unique. Yeah, well, because you also know there's no way that that was an easy undertaking. No you way. You know, when that volleyball coach went to the AD and said, hey, I have an idea, that couldn't have been, yeah. that couldn't have been an easy sell. Right. You talked about the relationship with Newark, you know. That for all my year, most many of my years as an AD and basketball coach at Finley High School, Newark was in our league. 
you know, we had Newark, Lancaster, Zanesville, and we were all very unique towns because we were essentially one high school towns. So, you know, it was kind of, you know, showcasing your players. You know, you right. just kind of need to be able to do something like that. 19.30 left to go in this one. Kaleida challenging, trying to see if they can extend their lead as this one's going to get knocked out. Logan Kerner was trying to get another shot off. And looks like it's going to be Veerhoff that's going to go out to take this corner kick. So far, neither team able to cash in any of their corner kick opportunities. Kaleida looking to change that right here to extend their lead. Veerhoff sends it with the right foot right into the middle off the head, and that one's going to go out as it goes harmless, harmlessly out for a goal kick. You know, for all the... Um, Good things that we were saying about Ottawa Glandorf, and they're still playing hard, but that, see, that goal seems to have taken a little bit out of them as they haven't quite been the same I, exactly since right. that goal went in. And, you know, I, from the first half, we knew one goal was going to be a huge part of this, but, you know, it's kind of – I think that's such a key in all sport, Nate, you know, is – you talk about, I always, I speak a lot on this, you know, of bouncing back. I always call them the lightning bolts of life. You know, the things that happen, you know, something that's negative. How do you bounce back from it? And you talk, coaches all the time talk about, well, you know, how do you come back from a loss? How do you come back from some, a bad shot or a goal or something like that? I think that's a key to success in high school sports, in all sports. I don't know if trying to do just that here late in this half, but. Ross Mag not able to connect on that try. Goal kick coming for Kaleida as the clock is not on Ottawa Glandorf's side right now. They are looking for that spark for sure as Mag able to collect this one in midfield. They're going to have a number advantage for a moment. We'll see if they can take advantage of it. Nice deflection up. Kali looking for somewhere to go. Tries to go right through the middle and nobody following. And that has kind of been the issue here in the second half is we have not seen a lot of Ottawa Glendorf players following the play right. into the box to be there just in case. And, you know, when you're trying to create shots on goal, watching from the outside is not a great way to do that. Clyde are going to send this one, looking for the run deep. And able to get into it. It's going to get dropped down to Nice. Nice controls. And I could really tell from this vantage point that, you know, the exhaustion of players on both sides. For sure. You know, I don't. I don't see one team being having an advantage over and over another. But you can really see it. Yeah. You, as this one goes down, you can tell that the time out there is really worn on them. Even though the sun has gone down, it yeah. has cooled off quite a bit. I say understandably so. I mean, it's, yes, absolutely. It's not It's the not pace, because anybody's out of shape. For sure. And the, well, the pace they played that first half in and, right. and everything. I mean, the, the shots that they were facing and the defensive pressures as this one's going to be again. And I think that Ottawa Glendorf is pretty fortunate that Caden Lozier looked like he was starting to lose his footing. And, not sure if he's cramping. It yeah. looks like that's a cramp. Yeah, it is. Oh. And is he? <laughs> if he would, that wouldn't have happened. He had an opportunity yes, for would. another clean shot, but unfortunately, started to lose his footing, cramped up. He went down. As you see, a lot of the Ottawa Glendorf players trying to stretch out right now too. Everybody just trying to stay loose best they can. And another stoppage of play as they're going to work on Lozier as he had some cramping there. It looked like right behind the knee. So as they work on him, we'll step aside and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WOSN streaming service. For $8 per month, you can watch WOSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wosn.tv, also available on Roku and Apple TV. Caden Lozier able to get up and walk off the field under his own power. Looks like it uh, was what we suspected, which was a cramping issue, which, again, is not surprising considering the conditions that these guys have played in tonight. And they're hoping they can get him stretched out. As we see another shot come through, this one not going to roll out. And that time it's going to get deflected as it looked like uh, Drake Zeller was right there, sent that one out. So 
Goal kick coming for the Titans. So we watched uh, Caden Lozier go down on that. Oh, I, I could feel that pain of that cramp we know he had. But, you know, too, what a, I, I have to give a huge shout-out to the athletic trainers. Uh, that is, such, you know, people maybe don't realize, but tr athletic trainers today are very, very difficult to find. There's such a burnout rate with that. When you look at the number of events that an athletic trainer has to cover, and it's just very tough. I know so many of them. I'm actually very connected to their Athletic Trainers Association, and it's a challenge to find one. So, you know, shout 100%. out to them. Yeah, my, my sister is actually an athletic trainer. As you see, Siebenek looking through to try to get through to get a shot, drops this one off, shot goes, and that looked like a handball that time, and no whistle. This one's going to get centered, though, and a header goes in. Yeah as Kaleida continues to play through the no whistle and Owen Grimm able to put that one in on the impressive header. A great job by Kaleida as you could hear in the stands, everybody wanted that handball call and kind of everybody seemed like maybe they stopped for a minute except for the Wildcats. They continued to play and it led to the second goal of the game. 15 minutes left on the clock, two nothing Kaleida. And Ottawa Glandorf, unfortunately, finds themselves in a big hole as they got to find a way to respond. So we're going to see some substitutions coming onto the field. But to finish that thought, you know, my sister is an athletic trainer, graduated from um, uh, Ohio Northern. And her and I were actually just having a conversation about this exact thing a couple of nights ago um, because she's actually not, she's no longer really doing things as far as working in that high school realm Correct. and doing those things because of all sorts of things that, that come up and, you know, they face a very difficult job that, you know, we are way more aware and sensitive to the injuries and all the things that happen with, with juveniles now as a breakaway is out of a glander if looks to answer quickly. Mormon looks to center at force, does a great job coming out to wow. challenge and then jumps on that, giving up his body and a great save by Parker Vorst. Yeah, great little bit of sportsmanship there too. OG player, congratulate, you know, just commended him for the good stop. And it's kind of neat to see. Yeah, but as we're saying, it's difficult because, you know, a lot of these athletic trainers would like to continue to do it, but just based off of a, a lot of factors, right. you know, it, it's very difficult, you know, because a lot of them aren't, as this one goes through, Parker Boris gets another one, looking for the cleanup. Well, and out of a glamour. We're right back in it. That's right. Just like that, the Titans pull within one a great answer. As number 11, Jaden Coleman comes up with the goal. And that is exactly what the Titans needed. They had to come up with an answer, Jerry, and that's exactly what they did. Well, you know, we talked on the other end where Kaleida just stayed after it on that last flurry. That's exactly what OG did, and especially Jaden Coleman. Right place, right time, but stayed after it. And you wonder sometimes, you start getting a little comfortable when you have that lead. You're not quite as crisp. You get a little bit more laid back. and. You know, Ottawa Glandorf took advantage immediately with an opportunity. So 14.08 left to go in this one, and we're back to a one-goal game. Well, you know, the third hour of our three-hour segments, I could talk about that time factor, you know, for athletic trainers. Oh, yeah. I spoke at uh, Perrysburg High School last week, and their athletic director was telling me now that 70% of, of their coaches – are non-school people. Yep. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, you well know. I yep. mean, the time factor, it's not about money. No, and, it can't, it can't, and we're also yeah, experiencing it, it with officials. Yep. Time it's, is more valuable than the money. And yeah, I think that's becoming more apparent every day. And I don't know that anybody really has an answer for that right now is I think statewide, everybody's trying to figure that part out. Correct. But, you, know, you know, for athletic trainers even, when you talk about the time, a lot of them, because they're connected to hospitals, still are yeah. putting in those clinical hours and things like yep. that. So it's not as simple as, well, they're just, oh, here comes another free shot yeah. as that one is. It has to be. And they're ball. going to say that that one was tipped and it's going to be another corner, but not a handball. No. So you're going to have a corner kick as it looked like for sure Caden Lozier was going to have a clean look yeah. at it. So now Veerhoff, he's going to go out, take another corner. Kalina looks to see if they can't extend this lead back out to two. You know, too, Nate, you know, I also see, you know, as we wait the corner kick. This oh, one goes right wow. through Harm. That was a dangerous ball for the Titans. 
But that one goes through. No one can touch it. Lozier, he's going to fight through the corner, trying to get back in the box. Sends it back to the middle. Here's Sibanek. And Sibanek has that one just deflected. Lozier now, he's going to send it. And he couldn't get a whole lot on that one as James Neese covers that one up to save. But, you know, we're seeing a lot of, too, you know, I think a result of COVID, obviously just my own personal opinion. But, you know, everybody wants to work from home. And pretty tough. To, although I can officiate from home pretty easily. <laughs> yeah, I know? think a lot of people, a lot of people have done yeah. that. But, you know, people want to do those things from home. You just can't, you know. I always used to joke about hard to get bus drivers, you know. Well, that's because everybody wants to do it from home. Yep. You know, unless you, 100%, you know, correct. I don't think you can do that. But, again, just my personal opinion. But I think that's added to the fact that people, time is more valuable. You know, your own personal time is more valuable than some of the money. Some hard contact on that far side. No whistle. Kaleida with comes up with it. And try to play it ahead. Oben Sivanek has this one taken away. Continue to fight, though. Now here's the Titans. Just under 12 minutes left to go in this one. Got to find something to do with it. As Coleman looks for somewhere to go, drops it back down. Trying to flip the field, but that one's a little bit out of the reach of his teammate. It's going to go out, throw in, comes into the Wildcats. Yeah, give Kaleida credit for that, for hustling over there. Sibonek plays it off his chest. Moves it over to his brother. Jacob has to get rid of it, and this one's going to get deflected down by the Titans. And that will stay in bounds, actually. From here, it looked like it was well out. Yeah. Here comes Kerner. Kerner looking for an avenue, looking to see if he can find a teammate through the cross, but he has it taken away. Corey was trying to see if he couldn't send that one deep. Veerhoff just shadowed him that time, was able to get that one off of his side. It's going to go out, and we're going to have more substitutions coming in. We mentioned they're looking to get those fresh legs in here as we creep closer to the 10 minute mark. It's been a well played game for a season opener. It definitely has. And we've seen, you know, even when there have been the, the mistakes, the inevitable ones, they haven't been the, the big glaring ones right. more often than not that maybe you might be able to excuse because you say, oh, it's the first game of the season. Another shot coming. This one's going to go out just out of bounds there on the end line. So it'll be a goal kick for the Titans. But I think that goes back to what, you know, you were talking about more time in the summer. And, and right. you know, you have a chance to be a little bit more prepared, you know, especially with the way that a lot of these teams structure their scrimmages anymore as well. And, you know, we get to see kind of the more competitive games right out of the gate. Well, you see, too, you know, that with the increase in the number of indoor facilities around the state of Ohio, these kids are going right into indoor soccer in the winter, playing outdoor club soccer in the spring. Summer's back to high school again, you know, because of the number of days they have. And, you know, it's, it's demanding. There's no question it's demanding. Some miscommunication that time as it looked like Ross Mag was going to be open for the run. Too many Titans in one area. The deflection comes, and Kaleida gets it back. As another deflection comes, right back at the feet of Wrecker. Wrecker goes into the middle, sends it over to Veerhoff, who tried to see if he couldn't play it at his feet, but got a little bit away from it. Those are doing a great job of controlling the ball. 8.35 left to go in this one. Ottawa Glandorf needs to get the ball back. Still lots of time, but they got to try to find a way to get the goal to draw this one even. Croy does a nice job of fighting through Kerner to get that one as it's going to go out. Throw in will go to the Titans. This one's going to get sent out long out of bounds. Go back to Kaleida. We'll have some substitutions first, it looks like. And actually, no. It's going to continue in 
since no, no Kalina player looking to sub. Trying to get a little bit of a head start on that one <laughs> as Grady Coleman was trying to see if he couldn't get a step or two farther up the field. <laughs> the official calls him back. Just able to save that one from going out and forcing a corner kick. Ends up going out for the throw in. Beerhoff drops this one off to Kerner as the Titans able to send this one out. out of, or Kaleida, excuse me, doing a great job of controlling the midfield here late in this half, which is exactly what you want to do when you have the lead. And it's going to be a throw in. Continue to battle along that near sideline. Looks like another throw in. It's going to stay with Kaleida. This one's going to get kicked, go out. We're going to have another corner. And it looks like this time it will be number three, Caden Lozier, going over to take the kick. Lozier going to line it up. Kaleida looking to extend that lead. Kick is on its way. It's a good kick right into the middle as Ottawa Glandorf does a nice job of defending yeah, to keep it out of harm's way. Did a great job defending it. Nice fight right there as that was Ross, Mag, and Owen Grimm. And right now a little discussion of which way the ball is going to go. And actually it looks like it's going to, is it going to be a free kick potentially? And yeah. it is. So a free kick to Kaleida is that one going to go against Mag, Siebenek, Going to take the free kick. Sends it into the box. And you see Kaleida trying to get up to head that one. And a little bit of a whiff on that one. Is, it looks like that's Kerner who was down. He's able to get back up as Otto Glander trying to play it on the other side. Here's Seafoss. Seafoss. As there's some more contact over there. 517, 516, excuse me, left to go in this one. We got a yellow card on Seafoss. We had said it had been a pretty clean yeah. game. They had been physical, but we see our first card of the game. And I think that's just, it seems like that's just to control it, you know, in the, in the hectic part here. Well, and as right you get, down the stretch. And you get tired and you get yeah. frustrated, and sometimes some of the good technique starts to go late yep. in the game, and I think maybe that's what we saw there from Searfoss. And Kaleida is going to be the beneficial on that one, and Searfoss is going to have to go out uh, at least for a little bit here with the yellow card. 5 16 left in half, number two, and a 2 1 Kaleida lead. Everything's slowing down, or maybe tightening in the last couple of minutes. Kaleida with the free kick. They're getting everybody set. Here we go. Easy drop down that time to Veerhoff. And Pineda able to take that one away. We're down to the final five minutes here, and I'm sure that we're going to see a really strong push by OG in these last five minutes. Yeah, at some point you're going to have to see OG run a couple of extra guys up, probably yep. not have as much protection on the back side. But they want to get this one even. They're going to have to get a little bit of the numbers going in their favor as we see a couple of more players hit the ground. And this is going to go against Ottawa Glendorf yet again. As Jaden Coleman will get whistled for that one. Four thirty and counting here as Kaleida has the free kick right around midfield. Send this one down. The header sends it back into the box. And it's going to get sent back over by the Titans. Raider sends this one down. Right now, you got to think Kaleida, their whole goal is just to keep that yep. one from getting down to the offensive third. They're fine playing it 
you know, a couple yards away from that midfield. They don't – if it goes out, it goes out. Right. Just trying to keep it from getting behind them at this point. Justin Collie, you uh, come on home. Under four left to go in this one. Long throw in down to Mormon. Mormon had to kind of just jump out of that way. There's a throw in. He's going to come. Here's Mag. Going to send it deep. And it is so, so beneficial to be able to have a player like Mag who can oh, throw wow. that one. That one, a little bit of a miss hit, gets played at his feet. Another opportunity and another. And that one goes in. Wow. We are all tied wow. at two. What a fantastic series for the Titans as they stayed with it. That ball did not really deflect as it nope. continued to just kind of stay put. And Ottawa Glandorf was quicker to react. And then Zach, or no, excuse me, that was Calix Pothas was able to put that one into the back of the net for the equalizer. And that was just sheer effort to stay after it. So now 3.16 left to go. We are tied at two. Not that long ago, Jerry, this was a 2 nil game. Correct. And it looked like we had talked, it looked like OG had kind of had the air taken yep. out of their sails. So now we'll see. I expect we're going to see an uptick by both teams now. The sense of urgency as the Titans feel all that momentum on their side, and we'll see how Kaleida can respond. And you talked about those uh, those responses to when things go negative. Yeah. OG showed it right there, and now it's going to be Kaleida's turn. Those are things as a coach, you know, I mean, especially if this stays 2-2, two -two, you know, that's going to go down as a tie, but a win, you know, for OG, if you can understand that, but. Kerner has that one taken away. Some more Ooh. contact as Lozier's trying to fight for it just outside the 18. And he's just kind of taken on the entire defensive front of Ottawa Glandorf that time. And Nice runs over and gets that one. But that is, that's, you know, the, the momentum and everything when it was 2-0, just everything going against OG. But your response to those negative things, those responses to those, it is just identifies you as a team. And Lozier able to create a little bit of space. Foot race to the ball. That one's going to be won by OG as Adam Mag was able to get to it first. As Lozier still trying to stretch out. We already saw him go down once with cramping issues. Throw in goes into the Titans. Under two left to go. Lozier's been very aggressive and physical throughout this game. Lida just looking for one more opportunity. Siebenek working through some traffic. Has this one poked away. And we're going to have a trap ball call, it looks like. So now Ottawa Glandorf will get the free kick. They tried to get it over to Mag, but that was cut off by the Wildcats. Mormon fights for it. He gets it. He's trying to run it through. Here comes Ross Mag on that left side. That one's going to be no good. It was a great job by the Wildcats to chase that one down. Throwing, coming for the Titans. Mag with that long arm. Mormon with the header. And that is going to roll very harmlessly into the arms of awaiting Parker Vorst. One minute remaining here in this one. As this one is getting tight. And just like if you're out of Glandorf, you had the momentum, but boy, you can't relax right now at all. Here's Lozier. Lozier has that one taken away. Great slide tackle by the Titans back into the box. That one's going to get deflected. Got to decide what to do with that one. Croy gets it. He's going to send it back up towards the midfield. 30 seconds left to go. Kaleida just looking for one more shot here with the ball in their end. Lozier works against Croy, sends it into the box. The Titans gather that one. They're going to send it deep. Back into the box. Great job heading that one out of trouble. 15 seconds left to go. Grader going to send this one up. 10 seconds left to go. Going to send this one deep. Maybe one last opportunity. And this one's going to get set. And we actually have a whistle here with two seconds left to go. And that is going to be the end of this one. And Jerry, what a fantastic game we had here tonight to open the 2024 boys high school soccer season. 
as it seemed like Kaleida was going to be on their way to their first victory to open this year. And Ottawa Glendorf just did not quit as they continued to go and continued to press, and they found that equalizer yeah. with just a few minutes uh, left to go. What I mean, this identifies them so much. I mean, I can guarantee you what Coach Metzger is taking from this game, and that's not to slight anything from Coach Burkmeyer and Kaleida, but boy, OG, their, their comeback, their ability to handle that two-goal deficit, which seemed major, yet they're able to do it and tie the game up. At, and it was going to be a Wyatt Croy, and I think I gave uh, credit to that last goal to the wrong. I thought it said 17 and gave it to Potas, but actually it was number seven, Wyatt Croy, who had that equalizer there at the end of the game. and Just a fantastic play by him to stay kind of continuing to go, and OG just never quit. And even though it wasn't a win like you mentioned, right. you know, both um, – well, at least on one side of that coaching staff, they're going to be very happy. On yeah. the other side, coming away from the tie, there's going to be two very different feels from each team. There sure are. And, you know, if you're OG, too, the other part of that is, you know, the euphoria of all that, you know, then you go back and you say, hey, we can't be complacent with the tie. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Ottawa Glandorf as the Titans and the Kalina Wildcats play to a 2-2 tie to open up the season. At, on Friday night of football. I'd like to thank our sponsor one last time, Ultimate Outdoor. Bring your resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. also like to thank our cameraman tonight, Jacob, setting everything up for us. We appreciate it. You do a great job, as always. One final time from Ottawa Glandorf. The Kaleido Wildcats, Ottawa Glandorf Titans, play to a 2-2 tie. For Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.